Now, because this was a uh, low-cost do-it-yourself type uh, project, I, you know, I didn't want to uh, limit my board to uh, the requirement of a professional pick-and-place machine. Now, but that's, as I found out, that's what you really need if you use surface mount switches because they all have to be lined up perfectly. You know, there's nothing worse than having, you know, um, keys that are misaligned and they won't protrude through your front panel and things like that. So, really, surface mount switches, um, you, you can't really assemble them yourself and get a really accurate alignment. It's a pain in the butt. And if you space them close together too, um, you just don't have room to physically get your soldering iron in there. So surface mount switches didn't really work for a practical do-it-yourself application. So I decided to go to through-hole switches and I got these little um, tacked switches which are uh, really cool. They've got a nice um, profile, a 6mm by 3.5mm profile and they've got a, a nice soft tactile click that you can actually press with your finger and and really there were only one or two choices on the market when it came down to it like you go to the catalog you go to digikey or something and, you know there's 10,000 tax switches to choose from but you know in the end you whittle down your design criteria and really in the end there's only one or two practical choices it really is quite amazing so I changed the board to a uh, through hole this one uses the through hole uh, switches and that means that you can actually hand assemble these and you can put them on and they'll and the line and the holes in the board uh, line up the switches for you so you can do a hand solder job and um, really get a nice professional finish with nicely spaced keys and and it all works really well the only disadvantage to through hole of course is that you lose um, surface area on both sides of your board. Um, so I had to scrap my idea of using a, um, a surface mount battery holder on the bottom of the board because I didn't have room anymore. So uh, that pushed me in the area of um, you know having a battery that was mounted off the board. So now that I had a battery that was mounted off the board um, you know on free wires uh, really that meant that I had to um, you know have some sort of case. So I had to reinvestigate the case and um, I got the idea of well you know instead of having a full case a full custom case why don't I just have a little case for the bottom so I went through the standard catalogs and I found a little Serpac brand uh, case and I you know it comes with a top half but I didn't need that I just used the bottom half and it just so happened to be I found one that was the perfect inside depth and dimensions that I could mount a coin cell battery holder or in this case two coin cell battery holder. And then there were more trade-offs with the case as well because you have to secure the case to the watch somehow. And um, this one happened to have a screw hole in the center which was really handy so that meant that I could put a hole in the center of my board here and uh, line it up and I could put the board on the bottom and I could glue a nut on the top and then a single screw in the back and bingo the case holds on. So I've got a little battery holder, sort of a, you know, a semi-custom battery holder um, that uses all off-the-shelf parts and it was really quite a nice solution. Now the next problem I had to solve is I've got a keypad, okay, no worries, but what do I do for a front panel? And I went through all sorts of designs and, and things and I thought I'd use like a membrane um, overlay or something like that, a printed overlay, and then I thought, oh no, it's, you know, this is a do-it-yourself simple type project sort of, you know, using off-the-shelf stuff. If I used a, if I used a custom, um, you know, plastic overlay or something like that, it was a bit of a cop-out. And, um, and because the watch wasn't in a case, there was really no way to actually mount that. So I've, um, I went back to an idea I've used many times in the past because I'm, you know, I'm an actual PCB designer and, um, you know, I know how to design boards. And boards are real easy and cheap to get custom-made. So I thought, why not do a front overlay, a front keypad overlay using a PCB? And that turned out to be fantastic. Now, because I was familiar with uh, PCB design tools, this is, you know, this is a piece of cake. I can lash this up in five minutes and you can have a uh, professionally produced front panel made out of FR4 
fiberglass and you can get these made cheap and simple and you can get a range of colors I could have had you know a green or a blue or a or a red or you know I bet I chose black because um, it matched the rest of the watch so I got a black uh, gloss um, solder mask and white silk screen of course and uh, yeah it worked out really well and because the keys were actually um, they they only had a very limited uh, height on the actual uh, key switch um, I had to make it as thin as possible so I used a 0.5 millimeter PCB it's really thin and um, that just slips straight over there like that and you can still push the button through there and you know that's what it turned out like okay so I've got my LCD got my PCB got my watch band attachment idea I've got my key switches I've got my keypad overlay and what happens when you put all those together oh and I've got my battery compartment with my bottom case you put all those things together and what do you get you get bingo it magically pops out the end a scientific calculator watch the world's first and really it's you know it was a piece of cake so in the end there wasn't wasn't really anything uh, you know magical or uh, you know fantastically innovative about this it just used a bunch of practical techniques that really led um, one to the other and you know it started out with an idea and it just popped out the other end